Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Full disclosure for y'all, right from the start, this is a filler episode, okay? Uh, we're not gonna have any real progress to show in this one because, well, I gotta start at bolting the 20 inch wide pads to the chains. We're not quite start status over here, but we're set and ready. And it's evident that I'm gonna be at this for a couple more days at least before I have a, um, a finished episode to show. So as long as I was in the, the track pad frame of mind, I got to thinking about a comment left by a viewer logs in as gears and stuff under the last uh, track press episode. He asked kind of an interesting question on these first generation D2s. How many different options of track pads did they offer? And uh, it's actually a pretty good question because while well, I kind of typed a, a brief response and he said that might make an interesting video. And you know, I got to thinking, I need some fella. <laughs> so uh, let's just run through that here real quick. Uh, I think it's kind of a, it'll be kind of an interesting story and got some pictures to back it up. I think it'll be good to do. We'll start off with the parts catalog, effective with tractor number 5J1. That's as early as you can get with D2. And that is some mighty fine print. I can see we're not showing up really well on camera. I'll just read it out. So track shoe widths that were offered, it goes down as low as seven inches. That was the narrowest you could get for D2. You also had 10 inch selections. You could get 12 inch, 13 inch wide, 16 inch wide, and maximum on these earlier tractors was the 20 inch wide pads. And you can also see there were multiple design choices for each available track shoe width. We'll go to the following page and see a lot of those. We had a flat shoe, an angle shoe, a grouser shoe, a skeleton shoe, a rubber shoe. Then we have a semi-skeleton grouser shoe, semi-skeleton snowshoe with double spike, semi-skeleton snowshoe with single spike. They would usually mix and match those, alternate double single, double single for spikes, you know, for preventing you from sliding sideways on snow and what have you. But then there's also attachments. We have a dirt grouser attachment, ice grouser attachment, ice and dirt grouser. Oh, there's a street plate. There's a rubber shoe plate. You could get all kinds of different configurations just off of what the factory offered. And this was from day one with D2 production. So right from the start, they offered quite a selection. And most of you may remember from the previous episode talking about the weights of these different track assemblies, however they were equipped. We're all well familiar with the good old 12 inch wide track shoe. These became standard on all the narrow gauge D2s. It didn't take them long to realize that the seven inchers, well, they were giving away a lot of power because you couldn't fully transmit all of it into the ground with just a seven inch wide grouser bar. So the 12s became standard on the narrow gauge D2s and the 16s pretty much became standard on the wides. Now, this is a wide gauge with 12s, not unheard of. You know, a lot of egg applications, they preferred a, uh, a narrower track. And of course, we're also familiar with the Monster 20s that I'm gonna put on this as well. But um, I have a couple of examples of some of the other track pads. They're listed there. This would be the flat shoe right here. This guy right there. And of course, this is the 12 inch wide version. This illustration looks like it's probably the seven inch. All right, that's pretty skinny, but um, you'll notice the cutouts that are to each side of the flat one. That is where like this, uh, bolt-on dirt grouser, that bolt-on ice grouser come into play. They have like a T-leg on the one side. You can see it on that one too. And then they just have a through hole on the other side. So the T-leg would go into this slot and hook beneath, and then it would attach over the center. And then that through hole had a bolt that went through this other slot with a heavy washer and a nut, or maybe a wedge and a nut on the other side. And that's how you could take these flat shoes and upfit them with different forms of traction, all right? Then you can see like this ice and dirt grouser, it does not have the T-leg or the side hole. It instead would have utilized these holes that are in all the D2 track pads right there and right there. They're set on the same spacing, whether it's a seven inch pad, a 12 inch pad, a 16, even these 20s have the exact same spacing. That's just for bolt-on factory attachments to suit varying different operating conditions. And this one is kind of neat because if we line up the edge of it with the 12 inch wide shoe on 1113 right here, you can see we have an inch hanging over. This is a 13 incher and these are pretty rare to find. And this one's been modified a little bit. When you look close, you can see some ragged torch cuts on this notch at the front and some ragged torch cuts back here, but it started life as this semi-skeleton grouser shoe right here. So it would have had the snow relief hole in the center from the factory and a single grouser bar. 
and for some reason 13 inches wide you can see it's listed it would have been right here the um 2b 9185 13 inch semi-skeleton grouser shoe heat treated so that's that's a really rare one there um and that's the only one i have that's the only 13 inch wide pad i've ever found for a d2 i got it with a pile of stuff um Another really interesting one that I've seen a few examples of is this rubber shoe. And you can see we've got some studs with some nuts that stick down. That utilizes the same bolt pattern directly onto the chains as all the rest of these standard track shoes do. And I actually found a YouTube video of, I think it's a 4U Series D2. I'll put the link right in the description below this one. Click on that link. You can see that D2 driving around with a full set of these rubber shoes on. They were used a lot in factory settings. Anywhere that had hard surfaces they didn't want to uh, tear up with steel shoes or grouser bars. Something else that caught my eye are the listings they have for a 10 inch wide grouser shoe with a one inch offset right hand and the same thing with a one inch offset left hand. So here's our 10 inch representation. We lay it over the top of the 12 inch shoe and we'll offset this one inch to the right. That would even us out with where the existing edge of the 12 inches are but that takes two inches away from the inside. And I still haven't quite wrapped my head around that. Is it for some special row crop application? You need some special spacing between rows? I don't really know. I do know that any track pad that overhangs further on one side of the chain than the other wears pins and bushings like crazy because there's a constant twist action going on those uh, track links. But And now it's picture time. I wanted to show you this one. This is a D2 tractor number 3J1. This was actually the very first D2 ever built. This, this came off the line before 5J1. And I wanted to show you this one because it has those super skinny seven inch wide track pads on from the factory. Two giveaways, the accessory mounting holes are so close to the edges, but the real tell is how the track pads are even with the edge of that dirt guard that protects the bottom rollers. You can see the 12 inches here. They stand off a good inch and a half from the edge of that guard. That's how you know. So yeah, when the D2s first came out, this was February 19th, 1938, they took this picture. That was kind of the tail end of Caterpillar's tendency to use a skinnier track pad. And as they began mass producing the diesels, you know, the torque, the output per pound of machine started going up. They quickly learned they just needed to have more material in contact with the ground. Here is an R2, that's the gasoline version of the D2, and this has the angle shoe, all right? This one right here. That is not a grouser shoe like we have on the floor right here. The grouser shoe is much more robust and it actually has a lip that sticks out ahead of the main traction bar. And you can tell these are a lot shorter. They have no material in front of the traction bar, but they are still full width. They use these a lot in uh, low-lying areas, muddy areas, they didn't pack up with uh, with mud and dirt as easily. They would self-clean better and still offered you decent flotation. And here's a picture of a diesel 75. This is pre-RD8 slash D8, but basically the same size of tractor. And this one's neat because it has the bolt-on street shoes that use those secondary attachment holes on the track pads. All sizes of tractors used similar layouts and similar options when outfitting the tracks and of course here's that street plate even illustrated in the d2 manual it attaches the same way and just goes up over the top of the grouser bar and just flattens everything out so you can run it on harder surfaces without tearing up the ground going back to this skeleton shoe in the d2 manual here's another diesel 75 equipped with similar skeleton shoes and as you can see from the picture with no other attachments on them there is not much there on that track chain. Here's a Cat 10 outfitted for winter work. You can see it is equipped with skeleton shoes and it looks like the ice grouser attachment cleats. You can see them going all the way around. Cat 10 with bolt on street plates over the grousers. Cat 10 with wide angle shoes, similar to that R2 we saw just a minute ago. And this is one of my favorite oddballs. It's a Cat 30 with super skinny beat shoes. That's right, those track shoes are only as wide as the track chains themselves. They're pulling a beat plow. And of course they had to have a super skinny footprint so as not to run over any rows. And last up, here is proof that it can be done. This is a 5J D2 that has the exact same 20 inch wide 
tapered edge grouser track pads that I'm running on 1113 and you can see from the sag on the top no track carrier roller they are pulling a LaPlante choke scraper with it but proof that those were ran and worked back in the day with super wide tracks super heavy tracks didn't necessarily have any support up top although like I said last time I am really keen on fitting carrier rollers on this tractor if I ever find any all right, I think this turned out fairly well for just being a filler episode. Thanks again to Gears and Stuff for suggesting that we go and uh, turn that question into a video. I, I had fun with it. I hope you all enjoyed it too. And oh, click on that link down below. Go check out that uh, for you that's got those uh, rubber track shoes on. They're wild when you actually see them in operation. So, all right, I've got a couple more days of uh, manual labor ahead of me here yet. And then hopefully um, after that, I will have another actual 1113 episode compiled and we'll get that out to y'all too so thanks again for watching everybody i'm going to get busy here once more and hope to see y'all back